Well, good morning, everybody, and um, welcome those that are joining us by internet to uh, Grace Community Church. Um, it's a privilege to be here this morning as I get to present the Word of God and uh, um, start uh, in the rotation with the other guys. And so, um, Lord willing, every uh, four weeks I'll be here um, presenting the Word of God. So my first message, I've titled it, The Way of Cain. Now, uh, this comes from the book of Jude, verse 11, which says, Woe to them, for they have gone in the way of Cain. So I like to establish, what is this uh, way of Cain? Uh, what did Cain do that was so bad in the eyes of God? And, and why is there a warning attached to all those that, that go that way? So we're going to be looking at uh, that this, this morning. But before I get to Cain, I'd like to uh, talk a little bit about the first family. And uh, uh, no, don't worry, I'm not going to be talking about the Obamas. So. <laughs> um, our passage I'm going to be dealing with this morning, as we read earlier, is uh, from Genesis chapter 4. And verse 1 says, Now Adam knew Eve, his wife, and she conceived and bore Cain, and said, I have acquired a man from the Lord. Now, remember, Adam was uh, created in the image of God, and... Um, and uh, he was made from the dust of the ground, and, you know, his, and Eve was you know, taken from his rib. But they weren't actually born in this world. The first person born in this world was um, Cain. And this expression, I have acquired a man from the Lord, I just, I find it, Adam and Eve had to have been amazed at the fact that they brought forth a child in this world. You know, it, it's, it's a big event, um, having this, this child come to this world. You know, it's, Kind of like those of us who've experienced bringing a child in the world for the first time, it's, it's a big deal, you know. And so it was a big deal for Adam and Eve. And yes, I'm the one that believes that Adam and Eve were real people, and, and they had a real child, and Eve really conceived. And so this was a, a, a big deal for Adam and Eve. And they had high expectations for their uh, first child. Um, if you uh, if we go back to... Genesis 3.15, there was a promise that God gave that the seed of the woman would bring forth salvation. So Adam and Eve was hoping that maybe Cain, this is, this is maybe he would bring forth uh, salvation and they could go back and, and be like before in, in paradise. Um, and this is uh, in contrast to uh, Genesis, Genesis 4.2, we read, Then she bore again, this time his brother Abel. Now, Abel was a keeper of sheep, but Cain was a tiller of the ground. Now, you know, Cain's name means to get. He was to get the promise. Now, Abel, on the other hand, his name means vanity, worthless, futile. He was not import, as important to Cain. So, um, you know, in Bible times, names had uh, meaning and purpose to them. And so, it, you, you get an idea that um, Adam and Eve kind of played favoritisms to their son. And we get more insight into uh, um, how they viewed their children because uh, we're told here that Abel, his occupation, he was a shepherd. And that's significant because uh, we learn in Scripture that uh, as far as in the eyes of, of that time, that they didn't look too highly on, on shepherds. And I'm going to give a couple examples from Scripture. Uh, David, he was a, a shepherd. And... Uh, he was overlooked as far as being the next king of Israel, you know, when the prophet Samuel came to uh, uh, Jesse and his sons, and, and uh, David was out being a shepherd. He was overlooked. Um, and then you have the example of uh, Joseph. Um, he told his brothers, um, you know, don't tell the Egyptians you guys are, 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 are uh, shepherds. Well, well, why not? Because shepherding back then was kind of uh, a, a job that was unimportant. It wasn't it wasn't significant in the eyes of them. Now we know in the eyes of God, shepherding was, was, was looked as a pretty important thing. Otherwise, God wouldn't make all that analogy to shepherding. Like Jesus is a good shepherd, and Israel is a sheep and all that, Psalm 27. So, so there's, um, the, sometimes the way man looks at things is different than the way that God looks at things. But you contrast Abel with Cain. Cain was a tiller of the ground. And this is uh, interesting because uh, back in Genesis 2.15, we find out that, that uh, God told Adam to tend the garden. So Adam was passing down you know, his, his occupation to his son Cain. That's how they, they believed Cain was this important person. And I'm sure that Adam 
and Eve, Adam and Cain worked side by side in the garden and the farm, and, and Cain was going to be the one to inherit, you know, the family farm, the family business. So this was, uh, you know, when somebody is important in your life, uh, you know, you want to keep them close. But as far as Abel, he was a shepherd, and shepherds were kind of isolated and they're far off. And and since Adam and Eve didn't uh, have much use for Abel, he was kind of kept away. And um, I think there's a important lesson for us to learn today is, you know, sometimes, you know, parents, they uh, maybe uh, put more significance or time into maybe a firstborn kid or maybe a son or maybe some child that has a special gift or talent. And, and so they put all their energy and time into them, just like Adam and Eve did with, with Cain, because they thought he was somebody special. But this is at the expense of their other children. And so I think, you know, you kind of see how now that sin has entered in the world with the first family. And they made assumptions with their, with their kids. And they were, ended up being wrong. You know, we find out that Cain walked away from God, but uh, Abel didn't. So God knew in his sovereignty that, that, uh, that uh, Cain would, would reject him, but Abel would. So I, I just find that uh, um, interesting uh, um, about the first family. And you know, I don't want to be too hard on Adam and Eve, because if we, uh, if we uh, look down at uh, Genesis uh, 4.25, it says, And Adam knew his wife again, and she bore a son and named him Seth. For God has appointed another seed for me, instead of Abel, whom Cain killed. Now, Seth names means a substitute. So here we find out Adam and Eve, uh, um, I think they still believed in the promise because they knew that God had given them another son to fulfill that promise. And, you know, you think about it, Adam and Eve could have, they could have easily lost faith in God because, you know, you look at this tragedy that happened in the first family. I mean, you had... They had all this hope and faith in their, their, their son, Cain. And what does he do? He just goes off. He goes rogue on his own and, and, and goes away from God. And, and, and not only that, he kills his, their, their other son, Abel. So, um, I mean, if this would happen in any family today, you can see how they might would uh, want to be bitter or angry towards God. But I, I think it shows here that uh, Adam and Eve um, continued and have faith in the promise that God gave them back in Genesis um, 3.15. Okay, now, so I want to now move on to uh, verse 3 in Genesis 4. And uh, this says, And in the process, process of time it came to pass that Cain brought an offering of the fruit of the ground to the Lord. And Abel also brought of the firstborn of his flock and of their fat. And the Lord respected Abel and his offering, but he did not respect Cain and his offering. And Cain was very angry and his countenance fell. So yeah, the big million dollar question here is, you know, why did God accept Abel's offering but reject Cain? Um, what's going on here? Did, did God just simply love, you know, Abel more than Cain? Did uh, God choose Abel before the foundation of the world and chose to reject Cain? Um, what, what's going on here? Because, you know, after all, Cain, he believed in God. He had a relationship with God. He communicated with God audibly. But, and he, he brought an offering to the Lord. He wanted to be accepted by the Lord, but he wasn't. So, um, if you take a look at verse 5, it says, He did not respect Cain and his offering. I think there's a, there's a twofold issue going on here. Um, first was, God did not respect Cain. So he did something on his own that caused God to reject him. And he also rejected his offering. So I kind of wanted to take a look at the deal with the, the offering first. And um, if we read in uh, Hebrews 11, verse 4, Hebrews chapter 11, verse 4, it says, By faith Abel offered to God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain. So, so we know that uh, Abel's offering was more excellent than Cain. So what was the difference between uh, Cain's or Abel's offering than Cain's? Well, Abel's had a, a, it was an animal sacrifice. Cain didn't. And this is significant to note because the first animal sacrifice in scripture it was provided by God back in Genesis 3:21. You know, God God uh, had an animal killed to provide um, clothes, uh, animal skin covering covering for Adam and Eve because Adam and Eve tried, you know, covering themselves in their uh, in their fig leaves as a, as an example of them trying to cover their 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 sins and uh, by their good works. So 
you, you kind of see the importance of, of animal sacrifice throughout Scripture and the importance of blood. I just wanted to uh, read a few verses from Scripture that have to deal with the significance of, of blood and why this is important. So in Leviticus chapter 17, verse 11, we read, um, For the life of the flesh is in the blood, and has given it to you upon the altar to make an atonement for your souls. For it is the blood that makes atonement for the soul. So you see here the importance of, of blood for Israel's uh, sacrificial system here in Leviticus. And then another example um, in Matthew um, chapter 26, verse 28, we read, For this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for the for many for the remissions of sin. So we see the significance of blood in the new covenant for Israel. And then we see the importance in, in Paul's teaching about blood. For example, in Romans 5, 9, we read, Much more than having now been justified by his blood, we shall be saved from the wrath through him. Um, Ephesians 1, 7, In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins, according to the riches of his grace. Uh, Colossians 1, 14, in, in whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins. So, you know, that's basically the exact same verse. We see the importance of, of blood throughout Scripture. So I, I see this has to be important in their sacrifices. And, you know, in, in Genesis chapter 4, we're not really told what those instructions are that God gave to uh, Cain and Abel, but it's not... It's, that's not really necessary for us to know what the instructions were. The most important thing to, to take out of this is the fact that Cain disobeyed those instructions. Whatever those instructions were that God gave, we know that Cain disobeyed and was not pleasing to God, but Abel was. And Abel, by obeying, he brought forth the right sacrifice, and Cain, by disobeying, brought the wrong sacrifice. And so... Um, I just wanted to share with you a, a verse in 1 Samuel 15 that shows the importance of, of obedience um, that God places on obedience in Scripture. You find it throughout the Word of God, but this is a, this is a good example, I think, here in 1 Samuel uh, um, chapter 15, starting in verse 22. It says, this is Samuel talking to, uh, um, dealing with uh, Saul, by the way. And Samuel said, Has the Lord as great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as in obeying the voice of the Lord. Behold, to obey is better than sacrifice. As, as in obeying the voice of the Lord. Behold, to obey is better than sacrifice, and to be and he than the fat of rams. For rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft, and stubbornness is as iniquity and idolatry, because you have rejected the word of the Lord he also has rejected you from being king. So, you know, we hear, you know, obeying the Lord is, is, is more than a sacrifice. Yes, the sacrifice that they got was important, but the fact that Cain disobeyed those instructions, um, it's not so much important, we know, because for us today, because we have our instructions for us today. Our, our obedience to God is based on, on the gospel, the grace of God. So if we were Adam and Eve, yeah, we'd want to know what, what was said back then, but that's not relevant for us today. What's the takeaway is, to, 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 is that Cain was disobedient and Abel was obedient to uh, whatever those instructions were. And you see in this passage also that rebellion is a sin of witchcraft. God places a serious um, um, uh, deal on, on those that rebel against him. It's, it's as bad as witchcraft. And so, you know, it's just as bad if you're out there involved in cultism. When you disobey God's word, it's a very serious um, issue. And that's um, what God is trying to get, get, get across here, I think, in, in Genesis 4. And this caused Cain to go his own way. And, and Cain developed his own system. Yeah. You can be a rebel against God, and, and not, it doesn't mean that you're not, you're not, you don't believe in God and stuff. Cain still believed in God and wanted to be accepted. His rebellion was more deceptive because he was trying to get to, to God in his own way. And um, we, we, we learned a little more stuff about what's going on in Genesis 4 and other verses in, in Scripture. And I think one of the most important uh, 
passages, we, we learn a little bit more about the identity of, of, of Cain and even Abel is found in uh, uh, Matthew 23. And uh, Jesus is uh, dealing with the Pharisees here. So I just wanted to, to read a little bit about uh, um, what, what, what Jesus here said to these Pharisees. I'm going to pick up in uh, verse uh, 29. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, because you build the tombs of the prophets and adorn the monuments of the righteous. And say, if we had lived in the days of our fathers, we would not have been partakers with them in the blood of the prophets. Therefore, you are witnesses against yourself that you are sons of those who murdered the prophets. Fill up, then, the measure of your father's guilt. Serpents, brood of vipers, how can you escape the condemnation of hell? Therefore, indeed, I send you prophets, wise men, and scribes. Some of them you will kill and crucify, and some of them you will scrouge in your synagogues and persecute from city to city, that on you may come all the righteous blood shed on earth from the blood of righteous Abel to the blood of Zechariah, son of Baruch, whom you murdered between the temple and the altar. So you see here Jesus is going after the, the, the Pharisees, uh, for um, killing all these prophets. And he identifies Abel as a prophet. Well, um, if Abel was a prophet, then, and, and Jesus is saying, you, you uh, Pharisees, you are the sons of all these uh, of guys who killed, the, killed all these prophets. Well, uh, if, if Abel was the first prophet, then Cain would have been the first one to kill, uh, you know, um, God's first prophet, Abel. And so he, here Jesus is, is, is identifying Cain as, as a, as a Pharisee, and uh, he, the Pharisees were self-righteous. They they uh, um, they thought you know their way was was more important than, than what God God was saying. And and uh, you see here how uh, well Cain, Cain was uh, trying to get to God in his own way, and um, and um, this is what the Pharisees were doing. And um, but. You know, the Pharisees were God's spokesmen for, uh, for the instructions for the people. Um, and so whatever they said, they were supposed to obey. And the Pharisees, you know, from all the way from Cain all the way up to the time of Jesus, they didn't want to obey what these prophets said. So they had them killed. And so what did they, you know, these Pharisees during Jesus' time, they didn't want to obey the instructions what Jesus was telling them. So yeah, they had them killed. And, and that's exactly what, what Cain did. So, um... Proverbs 14, 12 says, says, There's a way that seems right to a man, but in the end it leads to death. Man thinks uh, when he goes his own way, he's doing what is right. And Cain thought he was doing what was right. He thought he was going to be accepted by God. But he wasn't, because he didn't obey exactly what God had instructed. Um, most likely it was probably through Abel. If Abel was a prophet, most likely God spoke the instructions through Abel, even though we're not told but we are told that he was a prophet, at least Jesus said in Matthew 23. But I found this song I think is uh, very interesting. It kind of uh, details of, of kind of how the way those are going the way of Cain is. It, if Cain had a theme song, I think this would be it. And uh, it's called My Way. Now, I don't know, maybe some of you might uh, recognize it depending on how old you are. I'm, I'm not going to sing it, but... I'm just going to read the lyrics and, um, and uh, see, see how it kind of describes that rebellious spirit in man that they think they, they know what's right and they think they're, and what they're doing is, is right in their own eyes, but it's, it's actually rebellion against God. It, it says, And now the end is near, and so I face the final curtain, my friend. I'll say it clear. I'll state my case, of which I'm certain. I've lived a life that's full. I traveled each and every highway, and more, much more than this, I did it my way. Regrets? I've had a few, but then again, too few to mention. I did what I had to do, and I saw it through without exemption. I planned each charted course, each careful step along the byway. And more, much more than this, I did it my way. Yes, there were times, I'm sure you knew, when I bit off more than I could chew. But through it all, when there was doubt, I ain't it up and spit it out. I faced it all, and I stood tall and did it my way. 
I've loved, I've laughed, and cried. I've had my fill, my share of losing. And now, as the tears subside, I find it all so amusing. To think I did all that, and may I say, not in a shy way. Oh, no, 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 not me. I did it my way. For what is a man, what has he got? If not himself, then he has not. To say the things he truly feels, and not the words of the one who kneels, the record shows I took the blows and did it my way. Yes, I did it my way. So, I don't know, does anybody know who sang that song? Yeah, wow, you guys are pretty good. I was out in 1967, I found out, so it was a little before my time, but uh, I don't know, I just came across it. I thought, really, I've never really, you know, I just heard Frank Sinatra in passing. I didn't know too much about who he was, but I, I just thought this song really fit. And what else I found, found interesting about this song is, at least until recently, it was the most popular song sang at British funerals. So, I don't know if that tells you the spiritual condition of those in England, but I, I would rather have Amazing Grace sing at my, my funeral than uh, this song. So I would not want to be facing God uh, on Judgment Day um, going my way, because it didn't turn out good for Cain, and I don't think it's going to turn out good for all those that have put their faith in this song. I, I don't know. There's a lot of good, interesting uh, lyrics here, but this one that says, To say the things he truly feels... Not the words of the one who kneels. I can't help but think of Philippians 2.10 that says, where Paul says that every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus is Lord. Well, obviously whoever wrote this does not, does not get, refuses to bow his knee before the Lord. So I just, you know, whether I don't know whoever wrote this song had that, in that reference in mind in Scripture, but it just kind of shows that rebellious nature of man. And you can kind of see, in, you know, if, in people, people that are, are, have a rebellious nature because they don't have respect for authority, whether that's their parents or, or governmental authorities or, you know, or, or let alone God. It's just they want to do things whatever they want to do, and they don't care the consequences because they think they're right. You know, it's, it's rooted in, in pride and stuff. But to be honest with you, I just wanted to share briefly a little bit about what, you know, I was going the way of Cain. And I was a Pharisee. And, um, you know, you don't hear too many Christians go around saying, you know, they always rail against the Pharisees and stuff. And, you know, I'm not a Pharisee. But, I, you know, just doing this study has really opened my eyes to what, what, how deceived I was in my life before. And, what, what, and how Satan just deceived you and stuff. And what got me interested in, in, in uh, doing this, this message on the way of Cain. I know, like, Dwight mentioned this book before, The Way of Cain. I got this from Gary Miller. And so it was really fascinating reading it. Because I, you know, I, I never really heard too many messages on the way of Cain and, and the commentaries and stuff. So I, I was, you know, always kind of puzzled. What did Cain really do that was so bad? Because after all, there were, you know, God didn't really say in that passage what, what he did was bad. But you have to understand what's, you know, other scriptures, because scripture interprets scriptures, to figure out what was so bad about what Cain did. And like I said, it's because he disobeyed those instructions that God gave. And like I said, it's not we know because we have instructions for today for this dispensation of grace. But as far as what I did, um, you see, I, you know, I grew up in church, and I always believed in, in, that Jesus died on the cross for my sins, was buried and resurrected. I believed that 100%. That was never in doubt in me since I was a little kid. But what I was, didn't understand in my life was grace. And um, why this isn't so important to me, because... Um, I set out to establish my own way, and um, what I was doing um, was, you know, grace just means, you know, receiving something you don't deserve. I never thought I deserved God's love and what he did for me at the cross. So I thought I had to prove myself in this world, and so, um, and to be accepted by this world and the people of this world. So this was what I did to set out to, you know, to feel, make myself feel worthy and loved by God is that, you know, I, in my occupation, I was a golf course superintendent. This is what I did for many years. And um, I thought if I did a really good job at maintaining the golf course and stuff, people would be proud of me, respect me, and, I'd, and like me, and I'd be respected in the community. And um, I won't go into all, there are more details than that, but, but that's in a nutshell. Um, and, and when that time came, a point in time where I thought I had accomplished everything I thought that I needed to accomplish because this is what I put all my energy and passion and drive into for so many years because you know you got to go to school and you work hard to get the course in good shape this took many years 
And I thought I had to be accepted into this world and by people in order to be, to be accepted by God. And um, when, when my plan, when I was done, and I'd accomplished it, and, and I thought, you know, great, but why was I more depressed and lonely and suicidal than ever before? Um, and all I can attribute to, this is when I got saved, it was in January 2006 after that golf season, and all I can attribute to is like a light switch went on for me, and it's like what happened to Paul. God just showed up, and I knew he was real, and um, I had, for the first time in my life, I wanted to read scripture. I never had that desire before. Um, I, you know, I don't know why, you know, I grew up in a kind of a liberal church, and they didn't put much high view on the word of God as active and living, as Hebrews 4.12 says, but I had a passion. I, wanted to, I knew how to get to know God, and that was through his word, so I began studying God's word. And, um, and I also understood grace for the first time. And I bet I listened to that Amazing Grace song a million times for, I don't know, the first probably year or so I would say, because I got it. I understood grace. I didn't understand it before. You know, people say, well, yeah, I'm saved by grace, and they kind of casually say that. But do you understand grace, or do you just have a head knowledge of it? And I understood it. And I understood that it was a gift given to me. And I didn't have to prove to anybody in this world. I didn't have to uh, be accepted by people of this world. I knew I was accepted by, by, by God for what he did. You know, I understood the message. Now, I don't know if you guys remember from the spring conference, uh, uh, Pastor Joel, I think he was, and his, I think it was his first message, he was talking about there was like four or five <laughs> reasons the gospel can be perverted or, or null. And he says, well, you can, you can believe the message that Jesus Christ uh, and died on the cross for your sins was buried and resurrected. But if you try to bring any kinds of works into your attempt to come to God, he will not accept, accept you. And that's, this is the way of Cain. And Cain, he, he believed in God, like I said, and he wanted to be accepted by God. But instead of coming his way, the instructions that God gave to, to Cain and Abel, he attempted to come his own way. And thought God was going to accept him that way. And that's what I did. I thought my, my plan that I had, it's, it was, it's, it's foolish now, but, you know, but that's what I thought, that how to be accepted by God. I had to prove myself. Because if I didn't earn it, then God wouldn't accept it. But that's not grace. And so um, I just wanted to tie that into my uh, way of Cain because I, that's the way I was going. But by, by God's grace, he saved me that, that in January of 2006. So... Um, all right, I want to just uh, uh, conclude here a little bit, a few things on the way of Cain. The way of Cain was a result of Adam and Eve eating of the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Cain used this newfound knowledge to determine on his own what is good and what is evil. Cain became his own judge. Cain looked within himself to find his own source of goodness. It was this goodness from within Cain that he came to trust in, believe in, have faith in, and was going to ultimately present to God as his, his righteous offering. And today, we are still paying the price for Adam and Eve, eating from that tree of knowledge of good and evil. Man, by inheriting Adam's sin nature, has, also has this knowledge of good and evil. He decides what is good and evil on his own. Um, this is what the Bible calls the way of Cain. And I think, or just a good example of that, I think, going on today is, you know, the view of homosexuality. And it, it's, it's, it's really a result of the, of, of the knowledge of good and evil. Man thinks that God will accept him if he's in a homosexual relationship. And that's the lie of, 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 of Satan. That's going the way of Cain. You think what you're doing is right because you are your own standard of right and wrong, not God, and it becomes man. And you're deceived and you don't even know it. You know, and, and I, I, I know from personal experience. That's why only the truth of God's word will expose it. And that's one of the reasons why I wanted to uh, um, do this message, because in Ephesians 5.11 we're told, and have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather expose them. So we're told to expose the works of the unfruitless darkness. So we are warned, this is why God gives us a warning in scripture, so we know what's going on and stuff. So... I'm going to conclude on that, and, um, and uh, I'll just end in prayer here. Father, I just thank you that we're able to gather as assembly this morning and hear your word. Um, we thank you that you do give us uh, your, your warnings and scriptures, that we may be aware of them, of the, the snares of the devil, 
and how he just tricks us, how clever he is, and um, the situation with uh, what happened, the seriousness of what Adam and Eve did when they partook of the knowledge of good and evil, and how it affects man today. And uh, may you give us wisdom, insight into your truth, and that we understand your way today is through the gospel of the grace of God, that salvation is a gift given to us by grace through faith. And this is not of ourselves, but a gift of God's. Praise the Lord for this. In Jesus' name, amen. amen.